A divertimento is a form that was very popular in the 18th century. Literally, it means amusement. The term per se does not really apply to the form, but rather to the content. A musical genre of uh, a light and entertaining nature, usually for a chamber ensemble. The divertimento pretty much disappeared in the 19th century, only to resurface in style in the 20th century. Hello everyone, I'm Gemma Riglio and I welcome you to a new episode of Conducting Pills. If you're new here, this channel is all about classical music, score analysis and conducting tips. I want to thank all of my patrons for making this series possible, and now, let's keep going. The fact of the matter is that there is no set structure in a divertimento. It could be a one movement moment as well as extending to several ones. It could be for a soloist, a duo, or strings, or winds, chamber ensemble. And finally, it could include all sorts of different forms, sonata form movements, menuets, variation forms, dances, and rondos. It was a really varied construct. Two other genres, popular in the same period, are similar in the number of movements and players, the cassation and the serenade. However, while the cassation was focused on street-based activities, and the serenade on evening entertainments, the divertimento could span in multiple directions, including all sorts of occasions. Incidentally, the serenade was the only one of the three which had success among the 19th century composers. Divertimenti were composed to accompany dinners or banquets, livening up the atmosphere during conversations and offering an excuse for a dance. With multiple movements, one could keep the pace of the evening up, offering the type of accompaniment most suitable for every moment of the sweater. There are plenty of examples to look at. Luigi Boccherini, Leopold Mozart, Karl Stamitz, Joseph Haydn, and, of course, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. The three Salzburg symphonies, K136-138, are divertimentos in three movements for a string orchestra. For the K247 and K287, Mozart added a couple of horns. And actually, he took the genre to a different level with his Divertimento K563, written in 1788, the same year of his last three symphonies. In spite of it being a Divertimento, it is everything but light. It's spread out over six movements for some 45 minutes of music, venturing into some dark tonalities and chromatism. Both Beethoven and Schubert took Mozart's lesson to heart. As mentioned, the divertimento as a genre was looked down upon by the seriousness and tortured passions of the 19th century. It did have a comeback in style in the 20th century, with Bartok's divertimento for strings, for example, written in only 15 days in August 1939 for a commission of something reminiscent of the 18th century, just as Second World War was about to unleash Europe. Or Stravinsky's divertimento taken out of his ballet, The Fairy's Kiss. Or Bernstein's, whose divertimento was composed for the Boston Symphony Orchestra. And then Busoni, Prokofiev, Britten, and Martin. Nevertheless, it never quite regained the same popularity that it previously had. This is largely due to the fact that dinners became more and more functional rather than social. And almost nobody is using live musicians for background music anymore. With the focus being on the music rather than the table, the divertimento moved to the stage as a witness of what once was and how music is a mirror of times. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button right below this video and ring the bell so that you will get notified every time a new video comes out. For more in-depth analysis, conducting technique and conducting exercises, look on my website where you can find more than 100 videos and follow my Facebook group. If you want to support this series, you're always welcome to do so on Patreon. All the links are in the description. Let me know in the comments what you think about this video and if you have any suggestions for future ones. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode of this series. Meanwhile, please continue to enjoy music and be well.